very confident baby child. I always tell the story about when he went into kindergarten and Mrs. Perbinkler asked him, what's your name? And he said, Roger. And she said, what's your, you know, what's your last name? He says, I'm Roger the Famous. And so all through school, he was called Roger the Famous. And he was infamous. He, he was a daring boy, always jumping in the deep end. As a teenager, you know, he was very popular. And he was in the ocean surfing with his friends. Before the surfing, it was the skateboarding. If there was anything edgy, Roger was in there. But in his uh, last year of high school, we were called in and Roger had been missing too much of school because he was too busy going to the beach to go surfing. And then that was when I made the decision. He dropped out of high school and he was 17 and I made the decision to come here to back to Toronto for him and for his young brother to get back into school. Unfortunately, by the time we decided to leave by then, Roger was working and decided not to come. I left the Big Island with Brandon and, and a broken heart. And I found out that Roger had a, got involved with Oxycontin on the Big Island and when he came here the, I don't know there's some kind of radar out there he found he found the drugs and that was in 2010 2010 he came back He spiraled into addiction and I, I, I just, we did everything that we could to try but he, he, he wasn't ready, he wouldn't go to Renaissance, we drove him there, he refused to get in, things got worse and worse and worse, he became homeless, we thought that was a, the rock bottom and, and we did get him in finally into Renaissance and on the path of recovery. I think with recovery, I think no one warns you about the relapse. People think, oh, recovery, oh, that's good, abstinence. But whatever traumas are that, that, you know, that Roger felt in his life, he, he did relapse number of times and each time it was a harder fall, harder to get out of, until this last time when we, he was, I would let my guard down now because he was here and he was working and he was doing good and I thought, oh look, don't keep worrying, just, you know, it's going to be all right until he didn't answer his phone and then was gone, just gone. The last I texted him Saturday night, he was watching Saturday Night Live. I said, I'm coming over on Sunday because the weather was hot. I was bringing a fan, but come Sunday when I called him, he didn't answer. I didn't know if he was home. So I didn't go. And then, but we made the arrangement to meet on Monday. And then he didn't show up on Monday. Thursday, I went to the police station because you might think, well, why didn't you go on Tuesday? Roger had been in addiction for so many years. If, if I went to the police station every time he didn't answer his phone, I, my worst fear that moment was that he'd relapsed, uh, perhaps maybe got picked up by the police, but that he was 
okay, like just, you know, maybe with the police or maybe someone had reported him or something. And then a detective came out. I should have known, but I didn't, I just didn't, I refused, my brain just refused to go to, to disaster. And he took us into a little room and, and the two of us sat and he was there and he put all the papers on the table. He just more or less dropped the papers. I wouldn't say he threw them, he just dropped the papers. He said, there's no way for me to tell you this, your son's dead. And I just, I just, I fell on the floor. I, my ears couldn't take in anything. I just couldn't breathe. I was like, oh. No, 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 no. And this is all thanks to the York Heritage Quilter Guild. And last week they gave me the opportunity at their exhibition, they held an exhibition at the Botanical Gardens. And uh, they displayed it, the quilts, oh, right there among those hundreds of quilts. And all these quilts were displayed in one area. And then I had five quilts and I did a little talk in the library. I just spoke about quilts and, and how we came up with these quilts and quilts for ad advocacy and historically how quilts have been used for advocacy. So the first year with the Flags of Hope, we made almost 300 flags and we, we actually did a little civil disobedience right across the Toronto sign there. So this is an overdose awareness pin. So August the 31st each year, we go to City Hall and we raise awareness for that. And I've got... And then, so that... 2018 too, I contacted the CN Tower. I said, if you can turn the CN Tower purple for Overdose Awareness Day. And it's a big thing to have that happen, but it was just a, a one phone call and a form I filled out. And then it, it just got bigger each year. And there's our flag and the mayor comes and gives a, a proclamation now. Does it save lives? Well, it gets attention, right? And, and, and it's all about just breaking down the stigma, just speaking about it, talking about it, putting a, a face or a name to all the statistics out there. I, I think it makes a difference. I hope so. I hope so. <music> So when Roger came out of Renaissance in December of 2000, or January 2017, and came right here, and through Alpha House, he, he got a little job at the, at the home show, at the exhibition, the Spring Garden and Home Show, and a fellow who was helping boys in recovery, you know, he, he gave Roger and his friend here from Alpha House a job in the carpet. They had a carpet stall and, and I went by and I saw him. I said, Mum, Mum, come have a look. I said, which carpet would you like? And I'm like, in my dreams, Roger, a carpet. He said, no, 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 look, look. And we went through them all. They were all hanging there. And I said, I like this one, Roger. And then we laughed. And then he said, Mum, I got to go. My boss is watching. And then that was be about April. And then on May, it was Mother's Day and Roger was like, Mum, I'm coming over. And I said, oh, that's good. So he, he's like, where are you? I said, I'm coming. And I was laughing because it's always me looking to see where's Roger, right? Like, where are you, Roger? Where are you, Roger? But on this Mother's Day, he left here and he's like, where are you, Mum? Where are you? And I'm coming. I'm there. And then when he, he came up to the apartment, he told me to go in the room and close my eyes and he'd tell me when to come out. And then I came out, mum, come out, come out, mum. And uh, 
right there on the floor was the carpet, carpet. And, and he said, Mom, here's a card. And we sat on the carpet and I read the card and he said, you know, Mom, I wouldn't be here without you. And I hope you like your gift and smile every day when you look at it. Thank you.